Hi everybody, I just want to do a quick video. These are my top 10 Mustang must-haves. These are the tools that I found to be super helpful, especially with the Mustang. Sometimes they have different quirks uh, from your typical domesticated horse. So, uh, Ranger's feeling a little spicy this morning, but we're gonna get started. Coming in at number 10, we have hay string. Just regular old hay string from a bale. This was a rather unexpected one to add to the list. I used it in place of the lead rope, or I should stay as a step before the lead rope to desensitize and to touch, going over his back, using it around his legs, going over his nose and tightening it like a halter would. We used that before we ever got to uh, a lead rope or a lunge line rope because he was just a sensitive type of horse. So it was really good at adding pressure, but not too much pressure just getting him used to the sensation. And when we did upgrade to an actual lead rope, an actual halter, uh, he was much more prepared. Good boy. And at number nine. These are hands-on rubber gloves and they have these little nubbies on them. So they're like a curry comb that you wear on your hands. Now, um, these have been out for a long time, but I haven't bought the bullet and bought any until my Southern States had some on sale. So I go up like this and it's really helpful because when you're grooming, you can go all over the body and the leg and get all kinds of angles that you couldn't get when you're just using a curry comb. Now I already did this this morning, so he's like wondering why I'm doing it again. But he had these itchy spots up in his ears that when you get really close in there, he really likes it. See, he's looking at chewing. Loves it. So this is what it looks like. I want you to see. Look at all of that coming off and look at all that on the gloves. And I already did some this morning, but I thought I'd quickly come out and show just the difference that it makes. Look at all that fur. And I mean, yeah, you can do this with a curry comb too, but you can get all kinds of different angles all around their legs and make sure you're really getting in. Also, it's the best tool I've found to get out little mudsicles, the clumps that form in their feathers there. You can just kind of go at it and uh, it gets them out a lot easier than any of the other tools. Another one is, my bottle's dented, MTG. Um, I use this on my regular horses. It's great for growing back fur. Um, smoothening out uh, clumps of mud that are just stubborn or if they've been walking around in mud if they have any pasture and dermatitis it's good for getting rid of that fungus rain rot girth itch tail rubbing mane and tail detangling you can use it for that too um, but i have a different product that i like to use for that uh, this is the other one i like to use this is uh shapley's magic sheen hair polish i use it as a detangler and it works really really great to get all of those dreadlocks that the Mustangs get really easily out of their mane. So you just go on, spray it, brush it out like a normal. So you just spray it on like any detangler, but it's really, really nice and thick. So when I go to brush, it just goes right through. And any, any um, dreadlocks that are in there, it just goes right through. It smells like a spa. And it's really, really good at making their um, Made nice and uh, smooth, detangled, and shiny, getting all that dust out. And because their manes are typically thicker, this is really, really good. And I just use a regular mane and tail brush to get through and comb that out. And I use it for their tails. The thing too. I recommend is a hoof file. Um, you can get these at Tractor Supply, any store. They're sometimes good to have on hand in case of emergencies uh, with other horses. If their shoes are loose, you need to rub off a nail or whatnot but it's very, very sharp, so I recommend using gloves. Don't do what I do. <laughs> but this is really good for desensitizing them because when you get to pick up their feet, you can practice what a farrier would do just by rubbing this on their feet, getting them used to the sensation. So it's a good desensitizing tool for that. Let's see if you can kind of angle down. Up, up. So you see I've got his hook here. And then I can just go at it, and again, wear gloves because this will tear up your hands. But I could go at it, practicing on the edges. And you're not really gonna do any damage to the hook if you just do it lightly, but it kind of gives them the sensation of rubbing that a farrier would do. 
and then they can get used to that. I also recommend a corral. Now, we originally had ranger in this section uh, before these guys were here. Um, and this fence was five, and a, five feet tall in some places, five and a half feet tall in other places, which is the minimum requirement for a two-year-old, which is how old he was when I adopted him uh, for the competition. Now, this looks like this because Ranger is a jumper. <laughs> and uh, he'd get spooked by something in the forest and then run and either jump it or just smash into my landscaping posts. Uh, and break out. Thankfully, uh, he was already uh, halter trained and catchable uh, when that happened. So we bought him a corral, and this is five feet tall. Um, and it's just a little more sturdy, it's more imposing. Um, there's a minimum of 400 square feet, so 20 by 20. This is 10 12 foot panels, so uh, when you arrange them, it is the minimum, but I put it in a circle here so I can round pen him. Uh, and it keeps him <laughs> nice and safe um, and focused. So we've just got his water in there, we can hang a hay net, and he's got lots of room to roll around and do whatever. Coming in at number four, I'm gonna say is having a mentor. Somebody that you can look up to or get advice from, somebody that's either done this before or trained horses before, somebody who's been around and doing it longer than you have. And that goes for me as well. I asked uh, different people in the community if I should even start doing this kind of thing um, because I hadn't done it before, but I had sort of retrained or rehabbed horses. Um, and I did a lot of research. I watched a lot of videos, a lot of instructional videos from different trainers that had trained Mustangs. Um, different methods that they've used. Um, but yes, number four is having a mentor, somebody that you can talk to and that can even help you out if you get in a bit of a bind. Another helpful tool is a lunge whip or a stick and string or a carrot stick. Uh, sometimes it's called. Um, it's a super helpful desensitizing tool that can be used for many things. Um, run it over their back. And the greatest thing about it is it's nice and long. So if they want to run away from the pressure, you can just leave it on their back um, until they stop running and then take off the pressure by taking the rope off. Uh, saves you having to run up close to them or being in the way. You can also smack it on the ground or crack it in the air as a desensitizing tool. So I used this a little bit in my last video you saw. Just putting it on and off, and this is similar to what I did with the hay string as well, but this you can use more from a distance, so it can be good uh, as a early step um, after you're chasing them around or running them with it. Um, it's nice uh, to run it over their backs and let them feel the rope, run it over their face, run it over their legs, get them used to it. A buddy. Wild horses are often buddy sour because they are used to living in herd environments and when one of them leaves or one is left alone that usually means they're not going to live much longer so always recommend having a horse nearby or in view at least um, so that can help them i'm filming sunshine right now and she's wearing a grazing whistle because she needs to lose weight uh, because he she is ranger's buddy of choice we have six other horses besides her out here in various areas and she is the one he likes the most. I don't know if it's because she's the only female and the rest are all geldings or what it is. She doesn't seem to particularly care but uh, so I can really only work with him when she's within view and I'm gonna open up this main gate because they've been in here overnight and we're gonna let them out for the day. And you'll see he gets very, very upset 
when she's not around. Really I'm gonna do that one again. <laughs> and this right here is an example of my number one Mustang must have, which is patience. This is, a, I guess, a blooper of us filming this exact video right now. I was trying to work with him and he just <laughs> wasn't having it right away. Believing and trusting that you can get from just having him touch the end of a lunge whip, but not letting you touch him yourself, or wanting you anywhere near him, believing that you can go from that to being able to get up close and put a halter on and have him let you put the halter on and it just be easy and calm. Believing in that and having the patience for that, that is my number one Mustang must have. I want to thank you guys for watching, um, sticking through this journey so far with Ranger. Um, if you like these top 10, give the thing a like. Uh, I know there's other tools I didn't cover, sur singles, draw reins, uh, long lining, all kinds of things that you can use uh, for trading Mustangs, but these are just the ones that I decided to pop in, the ones I've used during my short little uh, tip challenge, which is only in hand stuff. So nothing under saddle. So I'm not including those things uh, Give it a like if you liked it And I just wanted to say a quick thank you to everybody who subscribed. We're over hundred subscribers now um, And that's awesome So thank you all and we'll see you in the next one